So you wanna know about my Instagram strategy for this year? Well, you're in luck because today, in today's video, we're gonna cover that. I'm gonna share with you all the top things that I'm doing that are working. So if you wanna do the same things that I'm doing, keep watching. All right, one thing that's really working well for my account right now is doing quote reels. And I actually mentioned this strategy before, so let me sit down and explain to you what the heck a quote reel is. Okay. Basically for quote reels, you want to create hyperlapses over your Instagram stories. And how you create those is download the hyperlapse app, put on your phone, uh, put your phone on a tripod somewhere and then go about your day to day, you know, and then download that hyperlapse and then upload it to your Instagram story. The reason I like doing this so much is because I like to show people behind the scenes. I think it's really valuable. Um, but the problem is that Instagram stories disappear after 24 hours. And I always thought that was a huge shame. Um, and I never really repurpose those hyperlapses. So now what I do on top of sharing those hyperlapses on my Instagram story is I like to download them and then upload them on Canva where you create a video from it. And then you can take it a step further and put your, um, you take your quote posts that you would maybe normally post um, on Twitter, or whatever and then upload them to Canva as well. And then you create a really nice five to 10 second reel and then download it and then upload it as an Instagram reel, overlaying maybe trendy music on top. Um, and when I've done this or seen other people do this, I've seen a lot more engagement than normal. And so that's a strategy that you should definitely keep doing if you already are, or maybe check it out. And there's a few reasons I like this strategy. Number one, it shows your face. So it makes the post more engaging versus something that, you know, doesn't or isn't really about you as a person. Um, and it's also really easy to make. So a big problem that I encountered was that I was always spending so much time doing dancing videos. I saw other people were complaining about doing dancing videos for Instagram Reel um, because I wanted to benefit from being on Instagram Reel and knowing for a fact that Instagram Reels have a longer shelf life. Um, and we know that Instagram as a platform does push Reels a lot more than other types of content. So the benefit of doing the quote Reels is that it doesn't take much time to do. You don't need to do any fancy singing or dancing or anything like that. And you still get to benefit from the algorithm. So that's why I would definitely continue the strategy in 2022. Now, speaking of Instagram Reels, and um, by the way, I have other strategies uh, beyond Instagram Reels, but now they're on the topic of Instagram Reels. Another thing I'm doing more of this year is repurposing snippets of YouTube videos and turning them into Reels. Now, I've done this before where you can take, you know, portions of YouTube videos, turn them into Reels. Now, I've seen people try this before with IGTV when that was still a thing and they never really performed that well um, versus actually using Instagram Reels. Um, yeah, I do notice they tend to perform better and they help you promote your YouTube videos at the same time. So it's a strategy that's been working really well for a lot of people who do both. Um, now, honestly, I wish there's an app to create Instagram Reels straight from YouTube. And if there is, comment below, let me know. But basically what I'm doing is um, get your, make your video, um, videos on YouTube crop vertically and then add captions. So if you know a better way to do it, then comment below, but people can definitely benefit from this. And it's definitely a strategy that's working really well right now. Not to mention saves, saves a lot of time. Again, you don't have to keep dancing and lip syncing on Instagram reels, um, which, you know, it takes a lot of time. A lot of people complain about it, you know, being kind of a time killer. So this is something that you can really easily do to save time and kind of maximize your content. Another thing that's been working really well is basically replicating Twitter threads as a carousel. Something I've been doing a lot um, is hanging out more on Twitter and I don't really contribute to a lot of the conversations, more just kind of like watch what other people are saying. I'm not really trying to grow my Twitter following, but I just genuinely like reading what people are thinking and I've just been enjoying Twitter. And so one thing I noticed that people do on Twitter is that they start tweets and then under the tweets they have more tweets and um, it's like a thread basically is what it's called. And so I've decided to do a similar approach but navigate it um, over to Instagram Reels. Um, and what I've noticed is that a few, or Instagram carousel, sorry, not Instagram reels. Um, and so what I've noticed is that a few posts I've done this with have actually gotten a lot of really great engagement. And what I like about the strategy is I don't need to do, you know, I don't need a graphic design team. All I need to do is uh, the Twitter thread and then screenshot everything, put it on Canva, create a carousel post, head over to the content 
creator studio on Instagram and schedule the carousel and you're done. Easy peasy. And I love that it's so effortless and yet I get the same amount of engagement that I would get on a high effort carousel. So I'll definitely be continuing this strategy in 2022 and 2023. All right, so let's talk about the fourth thing that's been working really well for me, and I hope to continue this year, and that's pinning high quality comments for my followers. So over your Instagram comment section, you have the ability to pin three comments um, up top. So what I like to do is reward my followers who are actually contributing to the conversation and leaving meaningful comments, and I'll pin their comments on my post. Not only is, do I take this a step further and tell them, hey, you have an amazing comment, I'm gonna pin this, um, this is so pin worthy or you won the pin award or whatever kind of fun comment you come up with. Um, it also signals to other people who are following that, hey, if you actually comment on my post, there's a chance you'll be featured and that's beneficial to them because they get pinned and they get the traffic and this has worked super well. And I did notice that my engagement has gone up ever since I've been doing this. I've noticed other people's engagement has gone up as well. Um, and you can recognize that people want to be pinned and it also trains your audience to not just post one emoji on your post or do low quality comments. It encourages people to actually contribute to the conversation, which can really enrich your community. And so pinning people's comments has been working really well for me. And I hope to continue that this year and on to next year as well. Um, and something I'm actually doing is giving my Instagram stories a break. Now I know this is counterintuitive because everyone says you should show up every single day on stories. And I agree, but if your stories every single day look like really boring, um, and people aren't really watching them, then you got to chill out. Because one thing I've noticed is that whenever I go ham on the stories and there's like 50 stories that someone has to watch, the engagement drops so much because there isn't even a point of posting those stories anymore because rarely people get to the end of them. So I'm learning how to self-control and make sure that I'm posting stories, um, but not exceeding a certain limit with the exception of the fact that, you know, if I'm going to launch something, I think I might go ham. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm a bit more conscious of how many stories I'm posting in a day so that people get kind of breathing space, but also that the content that I want them to see on Instagram stories actually gets seen. Because I have noticed is that if there's too many posts, there's a huge drop off in the story sequence and I don't want... Um, you know, oh, don't want that happening. And another observation I've made is that when I do give my stories a break, the first story that I do that's going to show up my Instagram story feed always, I always make a conscious effort to maybe show my face or show something my personal life, something that's not just a static graphic or something that's super text heavy. And the reason why I like to do this is because I've noticed a trend where my very first story is my face or me talking or something my personal life. It tends to get a lot more views. Um, and people tend to continue to click versus if the first story is just something from your page that's promotional or text heavy graphic based. Um, I notice that the rest of the story sequence engagement goes really down and you know, that's something I'll continue to experiment. All right, so those are my tips. I hope you enjoyed them. Um, if you have any other tips or questions, comment below, like the video if you liked it and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.